This is Mark and Charity's Coffee Podcast. Mark and Charity Coffee Podcast for Thursday, August 11th today. Miracle Treat Day at Dairy Queen in support of Children's Hospital Network. Amazing Realtors Race to support the United Way. That's going on today. Quinty Region, right? It's just day after day. Pitching in. Getting stuff done. Show's always part of it. Happy to have them on the show and on the podcast. Brandy Hodge was on with Charity when I was on vacation. Hey, what events are the Realtors doing today? Not going to tell you. They're doing that today. So hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get a chance to find out tomorrow about the... Uh, the two team teams that are heading out there doing a lot of fun. That's just, that's great stuff. I'm Mark Philbin. Charity still on vacation. Uh, what went on this morning? Patty Lynn Davis, thanks. She filled in and handled the celebrity birthday game. If you don't know about that, you should get up early. We do it at 10 to 7. Stay in bed if you want, but it's, you know, it's worth it. I have this thing where if you just gave me like a little bit, like, okay, this actor was in this movie and uh, they're Asian, like it's because it's, it's their birthday today and uh, I can get it. I don't know. I don't know why I can instantly just associate stuff or, okay, this uh, singer who did this song, bang, got it. I don't know why. And I say that because uh, Patty Lynn filled in and uh, somebody then phoned in and said, well, you didn't say that it was Eric Carmen's birthday today. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I love Eric Carmen. So, of course, I texted her and gave her heck. And, <laughs> and she said, well, I, I saw the name, but I didn't, and I know the songs, but I didn't put it together. And see, that's what I can do. So that, that best explains it. Of course, when you hear Hungry Eyes and All By Myself, oh, Eric Harmon, right. You know the song, you know the name, but you didn't know that that was the guy that did the song. So we have some fun with that uh, every morning. If you know somebody who's celebrating, yeah, the party's at 10 to 7 in the morning. And I have an idea, by the way. I'm just going to share it on the podcast, but I'm not going to tell you what it is because why would I do that? But I have an idea of how I can make it even uh, more entertaining and harder at the same time. But I'm going to save that for charity because why? I don't want to tell you and before I tell charity. That's not fair um, when she gets back. So not that we're going to change it, but make it a little bit more interesting, as they say. So I'm going to tuck that away. So anyway, so that was fun. So Patty Lynn, thanks for that. She'll be on again next week a little bit because charity is uh, not back until Monday, August 22nd. What else we talked about this morning? I got my Patriots golf shirt on because New England has their first preseason game in the NFL. Fantasy football, your mock drafting, everything that's going on. Oh my gosh, I love, I realize how much I love August. I had, I'd forgotten how much good stuff happens in August. For me, it was always after summer vacation because we always take our summer vacation. If you're a listener, you know, the end of July and then we come back for the August long weekend and then ugh, don't get vacation again for a while. Yeah, it's still summer, but now it's just sort of hanging on until Labor Day. And uh, no, I'm not doing that this summer. Weather's been great. A lot of stuff going on. Rib Fest last weekend. Rib Fest next weekend. Um, so it's really good. August is um, it's shaping up really well until we lost Olivia Newton-John on Monday. Now, I talked about this on the podcast, and Jimmy Hollywood had uh, the story. But what I wanted to follow up on was a check of iTunes. And I, I like to use that list because, as far as I'm concerned, it's immediate. You know, Billboard magazine will wait a week after they get their results and then they print it. This is like literally up to the minute on what songs and what albums are being purchased right now. So what is the effect of her passing on her library? I know what's going to happen when Paul McCartney passes, and that will bum me out beyond words, or you know any other major, major performer, of which she was, but she hasn't been active. She hasn't had a song on the charts of any note for almost 40 years. Like after physical, not much at all. So how much could it be, right? How much could people really have an appetite for purchasing Olivia Newton-John songs? And as you can tell, I'm asking that question rhetorically because the answer is a whole heap. Top 10 songs, Olivia Newton-John holds Six of them. She sold 100 million records in her career. And so the six songs are, in at number eight, Have You Never Been Mellow? In at number seven, Physical. In at number five, Let Me Be There. 
Number four, you're the one that I want with John Travolta, which I really thought would be number one, but it's number four. Number two is Magic from Xanadu. And the number one song is also from Olivia Newton-John. Summer Nights, perhaps? Nope. If You Love Me, Let Me Know? Nope. Oh, please, Mr. Please, don't play B-17. It was our song. It was his song. But it's all over. Nope. Hopelessly Devoted to You, also from the Grease soundtrack. So she's got six songs in the top ten. Albums as well. Physical, the album, is in at number nine. If You Love Me, Let Me Know, the album, in at number eight. Olivia's Live Hits, featuring the Sydney Orchestra out of Australia, is in at number seven. So she's got seven, eight, and nine. The soundtrack of Xanadu, of which she has side one, the Electric Light Orchestra has side two. So Jeff Lynn's doing well. Uh, Xanadu is number four. And that's a good album. I know the movie was like, ugh, ugh. But the, there's so many good songs on that album. And uh, the number one album on iTunes, you can guess, of course, would be the Grease soundtrack as a result of her passing. So within, what's today? Thursday. Within 72 hours, this is what has happened around the world immediately within the music business. And I don't know if it's because of my age. I guess I do know it's because of my age. But I don't know why I have this need or desire to feel responsible to defend older music. Like, I don't know why that is. I don't consider myself one of these people who will march up to somebody who's blaring a new song and go, that's garbage, my stuff was better. I don't feel that. Or, oh, today's music, you know, right? Because people my age, at least, you know, the stereotype cliche is that we do that. I, I don't do that because I, I love a lot of today's music. But I guess because I'm in radio or I got into radio because I love music and I play guitar is that I always feel that any type of music, especially like if I were to say today's music in any way, shape or form, doesn't matter to me. Today's music exists because of the process music has gone through from the inception of musical instruments. So if you take a look at rock and roll, so you want to go back to, around, to rock around the clock or uh, some of the other great blues songs of the 40s and 50s that led up to Elvis and Buddy Holly and all of these, you know, performers. Today's music didn't just get invented in a vacuum. It's a product of performers perfecting their craft and getting better and getting better. Like, have you ever seen hockey highlights from like 1955? It was garbage from the NHL. But for that time, that was as good as the game was. And it got better today, and today's players are better because they helped to perfect it along the way. You know, a female tennis player in 1960, the best whoever it was in 1964, would get hammered by Serena Williams. Best golfer in 19, like a Jack Nicholas at his prime in the 60s, would get hammered by Tiger in his. So things get better along the way. But I don't know what it is about music that when you look back at these performers, oh, they weren't cool. Olivia Newton-John, John Denver, Barry Manilow, Dan Fogelberg. You know, Oasis wrote Wonderwall as sort of a making fun of the Beatles. You got to be kidding me. Living Newton John sold 100 million records. Barry Manilow sold 85 million records. John Denver, 33 million records. Linda Ronstadt, 100 million records. So, when my point is, when I see that she has passed, I have all the Olivia Newton John already in my library that I want. I've already got it. I lived through it. I like it. CDs came out, bought them, got them. So when I see iTunes to this extent, it's people who were either now introduced to her or, as I, as I laughed about Patty Lynn this morning, knew the name, knew the songs, didn't realize it was the same person. Or said, yeah, I like Olivia Newton-John, both of her songs, and realized there are like dozens. And it pays tribute to an amazing performer who paved the way for a lot of other performers and created music that inspired many of today's artists to want to pick up a guitar 
or to want to learn how to sing like an angel. Older music, where it comes from, that leads up to today's. And I know if you sit down with Ed Sheeran and say, okay, where did it start? Who, who was singing and playing a guitar the very first time you thought, I want to do that? Is that person uncool now? I hope not. And I don't know why I always feel that responsibility to say it, because none of the performers I mentioned sure needs my help. They did it on their own. They blaze their own trail, regardless of what their reputations are now or what people think of them now. But uh, kudos, kudos for keeping Olivia Newton-John's music alive in whatever way that you enjoy it. And uh, it's a wonderful musical lesson to get to be where, where we are today. Coming up tomorrow, Jimmy Hollowitz has got Rumor Day. Uh, that's always good. So he gets phone calls like in the middle of the night and emails and texts. And he'll share some of those for you uh, coming up tomorrow morning. And uh, the big draw, though, tomorrow. This is the big deal tomorrow. Big draw. Harry Styles tickets. Love on Tour stops in Toronto on Monday. You and a guest could be going. We've got a pair of tickets. If you have yet to enter, be listening for Harry Styles at 95.5 Hits FM. When you hear him, head to the website at 95.5 Hits FM.ca. Fill out the ballot. Could be you. Keyword. I did one at nine this morning. Emily's got one coming up at two. Unless you're hearing this podcast after two, then she already did it at two. But she's got another one coming up at five. Unless you're listening to this after five, then, all right, you missed the keywords. But if you've got your name in there, charge up your phone because I could be phoning you tomorrow morning and letting you know you are a summer of fun winner to see Harry Styles in Toronto. All brought to you by Bay Subaru. 32 Millennium Parkway in Belleville and at BaySubaru.com. So good luck with that coming up tomorrow morning. Mark and Charity Coffee Podcast on Spotify, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your favorite podcast, right off of our social media sites. Enjoy this Miracle Treat Thursday for Dairy Queen, raising money for the hospitals. And good luck, Realtors, with the United Way. Have a fabulous day. We'll talk to you tomorrow morning. I'm Mark.